Let's go. Welcome to the Soul Fam Podcast, where we expand your personal universe. I'm Diana Marchetta, and in each episode, Soul Fam co founder, co creator Lexi Stremer Solden, and I interview the world's most rising and longtime experts in consciousness, spirituality, entertainment, healing, and science from Earth's dimensions and dimensions way, way beyond. On the Soul Fam podcast, our frequencies are high and your heart chakras will open as these powerful voices of today share cutting edge research, profound experiences, and valuable knowledge for your world in this out of this world, thought provoking, envelope pushing interviews that could only take place right here on the Soul Fam Podcast. Welcome to the Soul Fam Podcast. We are so excited to have Marie Knus from Dev Ocean Design here today. Marie is a longtime feng shui expert, interior design expert, and house clearer. She's very talented in recognizing bad energy in homes, bad energy on properties, and creating an environment, both homes and businesses, so that the occupants of that home and that business can thrive through their energy, through the home's energy, through the business's energy, and the property. So we welcome Marie Canoose here today and look forward to talking about some of the amazing projects you're working on right now. Hi, thanks. <laughs> wow. That made me feel great. That was a great intro. I'm like, wow. Like the end of my the end of well, my life. Is that I felt like, oh, that was a good life. <laughs> like looking over the horizon. <laughs> and we're done. Yeah. Um, anyway. Marie Marie also <laughs> makes dream catchers. I have to mention this as well. Marie also makes like the uh, most amazing dream catchers, which you might not think is an important important an important point of interior design, but her dream catchers are works of art. She's on demand internationally between Sweden and the United States and other parts of the world. Her dream catchers are very eloquently designed and hung in various places, spaces, homes, businesses, um, perhaps even exterior backyards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so I want to be sure we talk about that as well. But can you tell us a little bit, Marie, about yourself and how this kind of all got started? Feng Shui, interior design, all of that sort of thing. Oh, wow. So yeah, uh, I Feng Shui, I think came late. It came later in life after I figured out that since a kid, all I would do is like rearrange people's houses. Like, let's do your house like why? Let's de- redecorate your house like over and over with my friends um, throughout my life. And then things were like not, I was always redoing it, like redoing the designs until I figured out, uh, learned about feng shui when I was pregnant with my son, um, which is a, a, a factor because they say that little boys under the age of five, six years old, um, are the most in tune people in age, like for their environment. So you could take a little boy and take him to a house, and if he's not comfortable, that energy's off for sure. He's like a little barometer, so to speak. So I started studying it, and then my son was uh, there, and kind of I, that was that leeway into learning about feng shui. And then suddenly, I was doing a lot of feng shui because. Uh, I well, this is a funny, interesting note. How I got into the feng shui officially was uh, <clears throat> I was looking for another class to take, and I called four one one. That's how long ago that was for a number, <laughs> and uh, they gave me for a car number for a car, for a car service. But I was looking for a feng shui class or something more, and I happened they gave me the number to a feng shui master instead, and. I said, oh, I must have the wrong number, but that's odd. I was studying feng shui. And he goes, give me your birthday. And so I did. 
And uh, he ran some chart right there and said, I'm leaving for China. Will you meet me at LAX? <laughs> and talk to me real quick. So I did for some reason. And he ran, said that I had done feng shui in many lifetimes and that I, he definitely wanted to make sure that when he came back to America that I would, we would be in contact. And he gave me a lot of his clients just right off the bat. And I hadn't even done it before. <laughs> so just for my friends. And he said, you have like a knowledge of it. So that's how it started. I just literally started getting clients overnight. <laughs> It was weird. It was amazing. <clears throat> Did you feel like you had sort of, um, an, you know, an, a knowledge that already existed within you? Yeah, it felt like things were, uh, like I was being, uh, yeah, I could feel the energy's off. And when it's off, it disturbs me to a point where I can't focus for too long. You know, I, just, I so it bothers me. So this made sense to me now, like what was happening when I looked at something. I'm like, why is that not right? Like, I just can't get it right. And then with the feng shui, it became like a map to um, understanding how things go in nature, right? So I would take, it's the laws of nature that you put into an, um, your environment or any artificial environment to make us feel more harmonious, right? And it, it's incredible. So that was like my my map for figuring it out. And then you design after that with it, you know? So it's pretty fun. Can you explain? So <clears throat> we we sort of sort of know. I mean, I think I sort of know what feng shui is. You've feng shui my house, mm -hmm. but honestly, tell me what it is because, in a way, I still don't understand exactly what it is. It's uh well, feng shui means feng means wind and shui means water. Okay, so um, it's about the most how the most powerful energy on this planet is natural natural law mother nature like you can come up with any business you want but in the end on this planet mother nature rules right overall and when you so when you follow the basic laws that nature follows it's like you improve your reality by at least a third right so uh you follow meaning wind and water we're following a flow where wind and water go, so they're always moving, and I follow energy as it goes, like, through your home or through a city or through any type of space and see what it does. If it gets clogged, if it's too fast, if it's, you know, what it's doing, you can visualize it like like water. Um, coming downstairs, when you wa walk in the door, you have, like, a water fountain in your face, like, of energy. You're like, Poof, you know what I mean? If you visualize air to be water or something. So... You follow the flow of, of nature, and every single time, it's like having the wind at your back instead of in your face. It, it changes your flow. So you don't have to fight so hard to get things done in life. I mean, it changes every single person I've met, at least a little, if not a lot, depending on how long they've been there and how long they've been stuck, you know? Can I ask how many elements you're working with? Because you mentioned wind and water, which is that... Um, it would wind be air or okay. Yes. And so water is the strongest element on in nature because it can break down anything over time. And then air. It's funny because we think it would be fire, but it can't. There's wind and water are um, the strongest elements. And uh, so uh, that's what they call it for flow that we also work with fire and earth and metal, things like that. But they don't have the same power as wind and water, which means we create the flow with them and then we add fire or take away we just kind of like like you're looking at like stairway would be a waterfall like of an energy and you how would you stop that energy from hitting you in the face when you go to your, you know have a door so they put like a chandelier let's say hanging from the stairs which would symbolically push some of the water back up you know slow it down um so it's just a, it's very 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 simple and fun once you figure out what's happening so I try to do that with my clients is try to get them to understand what's happening because I got feng shui done years ago and I was like what like they just put things in weird places and I don't touch it um it's I've tried to teach people all the time how to um how to do it themselves forever because it never stops moving we never stop moving so you need to keep doing it like it's like a yeah it's it's necessary <laughs> 
So you mean because we keep evolving as people, we have to, and th- things change in our lives, we change as people. Yeah. We have to keep moving yeah. things around in our, yeah. our environment. Sort of like massage, sort of like for your body. Like you have to keep kind of making sure it's not getting stagnant, you know? And if you understand it well, then you will be like, I'm not, I'm not putting more trash in my love section. I'm not going to mess with my, you know, putting a whole bunch of trash with my health or something like that. And you kind of, or if you're feeling sick, you can like amplify your health section or having problems with your relationship, you can kind of put more remedies in there to kind of make it eat more flow there. And it's, you're kind of reading your health to, that affects your body. It's really incredible. I mean, I'm still amazed by it. (laughs) I've been doing it 24 years. I'm still amazed every time. Wow. It worked. Can mm-hmm. can you walk us? I don't know if you can do this sort of. I I know I still have this little map that you made of my house. Like you mm. just drew it on uh, yellow legal paper, and I still have it in my desk, and I, I still do. refer to it. Yeah. But could you walk? Do, is there a way to verbally walk us through kind of what the map yeah. is for homes? I can and do really. Space? Yeah, for sure. I think. Uh, well, I want to clarify. Like, there's there's a couple forms of feng shui, and when people say, "Oh, I got feng shui done with a compass." If you did, then sadly, like the compass, true north and magnetic north are off these days. Everybody knows, you know, causing climate change, all this stuff with the, the, um, they're off by like 12 degrees. It keeps moving. So you don't want to use the compass anymore in the feng shui because it doesn't work correctly. So I use the oldest form and that's when you're looking at where's the ocean, where's the mountains, um, and to go from there. So all of them, it's really, it seems to work every time. I've even redone compass feng shui to this version and it just makes sense. Super simple. So I think if you were to know one thing and it should be just a law is, um, where your water is in your home and, and water is, uh, the engine to it all. It's like the most powerful element. So, um, in your house, water would mean uh, pictures of water, fountains, and mirrors, right? So your body thinks a mirror is water. So if you're sleeping near a mirror, I, uh, probably I could pretty much guess anyone sleeping near a mirror is probably not going to sleep too well or be on sleeping pills or say, yeah, I just don't sleep a lot or have a lot of nightmares, um, Except for occasional few can sleep through anything. <laughs> but most people are going to be a bit disturbed by it. So, because you, your body thinks that that mirror, no matter what size it is, is that size of a body of water. Right? So, if you're sleeping near that body of water that's the size of your mirror, uh, your body's going to sleep with one eye open, going like, don't drown. Don't drown. This is all like body subconscious talk. It's just how our bodies work. It's an instinct, you know? It's so amazing. Um, and. So where you, uh, we're very sensitive to water since we're made up of water. So if that'd be one thing you learn about feng shui is where is the majority of your water? And and that means like, let's say you have a house of mirrors and you look at the size of the mirrors. If the majority of the sides of the mirrors are on your left as you enter your room or your house or your property, you are guaranteed losing energy, losing money. It's not going too well. It could go way better, is what I'm saying. It could go way better. If it's going great, then, wow, get ready to be greater, right? So it, you would have the majority of the water on your right, which means pools, um, mirrors, pictures of water. If you have a picture of a pond on the left and a picture of a waterfall on the right, you have more water on the right because it's powerful moving water, symbolic. And your body's reading this. Like it, it thinks everything's fake flowers are real. It's like really interesting how your body reads the environment and you don't even realize, but so water being the strongest, um, every foreclosure house I've done, the water pools usually on the left. Um, it should be a law. Like literally it should be a law. You can only put your pool on the right of the side of the prop of your front door property. That's it. <laughs> um, uh, every single time that's true. So that's the most important element is where your water is. Um, there's lots of tricks you can do. To trick your 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 mind into believing that the water's moved over to the right, and once it believes that, it starts to impa- copy its environment um, and be more powerful. If we have a messed up environment and we stay longer than two weeks, we start to take it on 
and get burdened by it and like get down and what uh, turn into the house and we start copying the house because we're just basically copycatters all of us we learn language by copying when we're a kid we don't we we, we copy it's almost like we're computers already and like, people talk about all that stuff but i've been saying for a long time ago it feels like we are computers because you can just rechange your house and suddenly you're acting different <laughs> you know it's pretty interesting but um yeah we go in patterns basically so, so when, when you walk in the front door where your front door is, and so there's four, is it four quadrants in the home or in the business? There's eight, but like you could really, really simplify it. Like super simple, like keep your water on the right. You're, everything's done from the standpoint of standing in your home or your room or your office or your property. Like as you enter, st- stop there. And, and then we look at it from that point, right? Um, the majority of your water needs to be on the right. If you have a pool, you're thinking of buying that house on the left. Don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. Trust me. Do the one with the pool on the right. It just makes life so much easier. Um, and then uh, another like simple point would be the far side of where you're standing. The opposite wall would be technically overall a firewall, meaning uh, it would be no. Ideally, you want fire, candles, warm colors things that represent your happiness and your love. You don't want like murder scenes or bad words or strange things, right? Because you start to copy whatever's there. Um, Money, blessings, love. It's very important. So basically to cover it would be fire elements. Just keep it really simple, you know? And, And then your basic, your far left, the whole left side would be your health um, and and your money and stuff. So it has to be green. It has to be flowers or plants or got a toilet there. We really got to change that so you don't get sick or don't stay, stay there too long. There's certain elements that can really hurt you if it's put in the wrong, if it's in the wrong area. So pretty much everybody who has a toilet in their health section is probably not going to want to stay there for too long because you're going to start getting sick. I mean, because the toilet represents a problem to our bodies because we don't have toilets in nature like in our environment so if you're hanging out with a tribe nobody's just sitting down and going to the bathroom right there in the group you hike away from your environment to go to the bathroom in nature so we have toilets in our house now so the body's like doesn't doesn't get it and starts to and has drains in there so it'll start draining whatever areas it's in if we don't fix the remedy it to the mind it's incredible that should be another law yeah, it works every time with all the stupid laws they have. They don't, they should. Delete. This is a good one, you know. You, yeah, I have a question. Mm-hmm. I'm dying to ask about the haha. Dying yeah. to ask. There's something that I read, and I don't know if this is feng shui or not. But if you, I read something that was like, if you put a bed facing a doorway, mm-hmm. it's called morgue position, and that's mm-hmm. really bad. Yeah, so, so yeah, uh, the position of your feet going true? out the window is the worst part. That's oh. where you, pl- you place dying people in that position when they're dying to help them pass easier so okay. they don't get stuck, kind of. Feet out the window is bad, but it can be facing, so their feet should not be facing a window, but they can face um, yes. the so Yeah, the thing you want to think about is your body likes to be furthest away from a door. So if you're sleeping and you're right there in the entrance, you're just not going to feel comfortable. Someone's going to come in and walk right into you or um, you won't sleep as well. So you want to be furthest. Animals and people like to be furthest from the door and observe from the door. Martial arts is like that too. Like go to the furthest corner, put your back against the wall and have vision of the whole room. That's how we want to be too. That's how we feel the safest, right? To have time to react to things, you know, keep you alive. So if you're, if you're, uh, in a doorway and in an awkward position in the room like that, yeah, you'll feel weird. So you want to shift that. You don't want to be in any path, you know? That's Your instinct tells you danger. <laughs> you know, someone's got to trip over you. Um, yeah, so does that kind of your question we were kind of wondering? Yeah, it does. Thank you. And I know I'm just I'm so curious about the house yeah. clearing oh as gosh. well. I don't know even... Well, yeah, uh, 
being in California, everybody sages their house here and stuff and Native American energy to clear um, negative energy, which really works well on a daily basis for like funky energy. But um, when I was doing all my research, I found this very old clearing. It was like over 2000 years old. I'm going to find it very old, like where I would do it with people and they would like sometimes get feel ill even when we did the clearing or funky or start crying or whatever so it's super easy i do like uh, uh salt sea salt and then alcohol and, and set it on fire in the center of the house it's said to clear the past of the space and then we meditate to like bring in new energy and release and transform all the old stuff so that's like an official clearing i usually do after we do feng shui to like get rid of all the muck and then you could sage you know, every, however you want after. But that's the real clearing where I can see if, if, if the salt burns with black dots in it, you have entities still stuck in the place, which happens. They get stuck in uh, homes a lot because uh, it's like a portal and they have a lot of doors and, and mirrors that keep people stuck. So you have a haunted house because the house is messed up. <laughs> it can hold this frequency. As opposed to if we do start doing the feng shui and get the house to move, they just, they leave. They go, you know, they, they can't stay because it's constantly moving like fresh water. It doesn't get muddy, you know, it keeps it going. They keep moving. <laughs> so rem remind me, remind us how to do that, Marie. Do you oh. put it, do you put the salt in a oh, yeah. metal container? Right. Do you use regular sea salt? Do you use whiskey? <clears throat> I mean, do you yeah. use, you know. Um, so we could, I like, to, we, I use sea salt because I don't want to do all this other stuff that's been processed. And take a pie tin, a little, at the grocery store and fill it up halfway with the salt, right? And then I take rubbing alcohol and fill it up just below the level of the salt just saturate the salt and you go to the center of the home and make sure it's clear like there's nothing that can catch on fire and a ceramic and be safe with fire right um and then you light it and you hold the space for seeing uh the place clear i usually see like a golden like tube of light going from the sky down into the earth and just everything's moving and nothing's everything turns to like the highest frequency light everything transforms there's nothing negative at all everything is just transformed you know and i meditate on that and then um the customer or client meditates on what they want to feel in their home like love harmony just positive words is what i would say because a lot of people don't know how to meditate or they think they don't so you just say love over and over and you'll be covered. <laughs> yeah. Some high frequency <laughs> word, you know, you're good. Just you don't don't get the, all the negative thoughts in there. Like, I don't want someone coming over. I don't want that guy. I don't want this. I don't want... Then you're creating it. You just want to focus on what you do want, you know? Go forward. And like, oh, yay, 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 the whole time, right? Even if you just say yay <laughs> say or love, just it works. <clears throat> and that clears it. But if you have little dots in there that afterwards it should burn clean so if there's a couple dots in there consult your local you know spirit clearing person because <laughs> <laughs> you never know what you're dealing with i did six times one place i moved into i was like wow i really have to choose they wow. wouldn't leave six six times over and over and over i'm like god when they stuck on the <laughs> they didn't want to go anywhere <clears throat> that's very rare you know usually it goes really easy it's like wiping down the counter it's just easy you know because they want to leave. No. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I mean, because you're, you're a dominion. Yes, there are dimensional portals and stuff. There's things like that where you want to cohabitate. But really, when you're in a home like that, no, no, no. They, that's time. You're the, you're, this is the realm of the house. So unless, I mean, did anybody see, um, what's it called? IA? I, not IA. AI? No, not AI. Uh-huh. I forget it. Oh my god! It was what, it was, was a movie I saw about how aliens. they were in different dimensions in the home, and they could sense the person was there. She was in another dimension, away. Yeah, uh, what was it called? Away. Yeah, something like that. Artificial intelligence, you mean, yeah, or some sort of um, plea? Oh, yeah, I'm something. Like how am I forgetting? It's two letters. I mean, I'm, okay, cut that part out. <laughs> okay, and then <laughs> so where I'm like, <laughs> what? That's <laughs> fake. Um, <clears throat> huh. But, yep. but that's interesting because we had just talked uh, about quantum entanglement with a yeah. 
producer yeah. who'd worked on many episodes of Ghost Hunters and The mm. Secret of Skinwalker Ranch about different realities <sighs> yes. or timelines wow. or there are like there are different have, levels up against each other. <laughs> I, <clears throat> yeah, and that's super interesting. Mm. There's different levels for us. We have a we have like a hallway where I think it's just like a highway because my mm -hmm. son he yeah. would always say like, oh, I think I saw something go by and then it disappeared. So we think things are just coming through like it's the freeway interpass and they're they're you know the interchange they're just getting on another freeway they there's like yeah a and that's they're, they're, used, they're blend, bleeding over right step, and then hopefully. and looking into each other time is what is an illusion right because time is what is what makes this reality the way it is i think that's how <clears throat> when you see a house is haunted and you see a person walking up and down you hear, a person's been walking up and down the stairs there for 50 years right why are they, but they don't sense time on the other side. We do. So 50 years is one second. They're in the loop of going up and down the stairs and it's the same moment for them. Like that U2 song, stuck in a moment, can't get out hmm. because time is what imprisons that. That's how I started to really understand that. Like time is what keeps us seeing this reality the way it is. That's why we're seeing this being who's out of their body or hearing him going up and down the stairs for 50, 100 years. They're not doing that, <clears throat> but that's how we perceive it because we can't get out of, you know, what, what does that mean? Like out of time and out of body. So we're like the little, did you guys ever read the story about a piece of paper and then a line lives on, that we draw on it lives on the paper, but the pa that little line doesn't understand us like, Hey, line <laughs> underneath the page and us, it just sees the paper and that's where we are. We're like, what? So we can't really see <clears throat> the other world until we. Hmm. Like, right. come out of the time, the time thing. Or we change our frequency so right. that we can move change, exactly. and that, between dimensions. Right. So you speed up to go into the future and you slow down to go into the past, right? In time as well. And then also, true for psychology, so the future's faster. And, and that's why people get anxiety when they think about the future. And then that's the past, you have to go slower to go into the past. And that's why they're depressed, too, when they're thinking about the past. They're like, oh, my God, <laughs> going backwards. It's interesting. Time is really wild. But <laughs> <laughs> Marie. We so, can go down that road, yeah. I know, we're going down this rabbit hole, which, of course, it's, we it love. Is. We're all about rabbit holes. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's go back to the home part, too, yes. especially because you work with some very high-end clients and you work with and, – and businesses as well. Can you talk a little bit about just in general terms what kind of homes and businesses that you've worked with? I know I thought Incredible. you've done a recording studio. Yeah. You know, you've done a, a lot of different kinds of projects. Incredible. And this isn't just about feng shui. I think you know our listeners need to know it's not just that you do the feng shui. You really pay attention to all of the details. Mm. Yeah. Would that well, be right? Yes. It definitely opens up, like you said, like a, it opens up all these other things. So I think, uh, God, there's so many great examples. But I think, uh, see, a good one of somebody I could talk about, the thing is that a lot of people are into spiritual things and, and we could go really deep. But then after we talk about those things, a lot of people don't want other people to know that they, you know, they don't want any type of shaming basically, or, Oh, feng shui might not be good. I like feng shui, but don't tell anyone or, you know what I mean? So I'm a secret weapon for a lot of people. And I don't know how many people I could talk about who I do, but I can, I can mention one, one, one of the most interesting jobs I think I've had that really kind of has all these angles to it was, uh, uh, I did a house that was, uh, split into, it was, um, it was, James Dean's old place in Beverly Hills, right? And they split it into two different places. I didn't know this then, right? I just got calls for a job. <clears throat> and as I'm walking, as we do the feng shui, if I start to, as soon as I start to remedy and see like how the house is and I tune into the house and it's, and I start putting the things in the right position, that's when I notice that, um, I could see any entities or feel them or hear them, um, <clears throat> come loose kind of like they're there. So, like, for example, I was doing this one place, and we were almost done, and I just kind of went through, just kind of feel the energy one more time, and I walked right into the room I was just in, and there was an old man sitting there on this couch, and looked like he was looking at TV, but I didn't really pay attention, because I'm kind of like, oh, like, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you, and he's like, it's okay, and then I apologized to the person downstairs, I'm like, sorry, I think I might have, like, woken your dad, or I don't know what happened there, 
And she just looked at me strange because what are you talking about? My dad's dead, you know? He's been dead for a long time. But I described him to a T. And he was just happy sitting there on the couch, you know? <laughs> like, <clears throat> and after, so after we did the feng shui, he started to become more physical. Like, I could see him and he was releasing. He'd been sitting there for a long time <clears throat> because he was out of time. So it could have been five minutes to him. So trippy. Um, and so James Dean's place. I went and did that. Uh, I didn't know. I was doing the job. And right at the end, I heard in my head, what are you doing here? Over and over. And I was like, Am I, oh, I don't know. Who. It was. Just, I thought I was kind of like maybe tired and like thinking of weird. Mm-hmm. And suddenly I smell the cat urine, right? It smells like when I'm done. And I could feel the, see the spot where it was. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I think your cat peed right here. And they were like, no, we don't have any cats. <laughs> and then the lady said to her husband, like, it's strange that she's pointing at that exact spot, honey. Like, and I was like, since I still at this point did not know what was going on there. So it turns out that James Dean's girlfriend had committed suicide right there at that spot. Right. And I didn't know anything about James Dean's girlfriend, nothing. And the minute, I mean, I could get, I can cry about it right now because it was so. At this juncture in the conversation, all of our recordings suddenly went dead. Here at the SoulFam podcast, we often experience technical difficulties when dealing with phenomena of this sort. We hope you'll stay tuned for part two of our conversation about the James Dean house clearing mystery with Dev Ocean design and feng shui expert Marie Canoes, right here on the SoulFam podcast. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Soul Fam Podcast. Be sure to tune in to every episode where we dive into a different rabbit hole of the known and unknown to empower you in conscious living and exploration of the greater universe. We hope you leave each episode with a little stardust in your hair and inspiration in your heart with love from your soul fam.